Roll my, roll my, sports show, sports show. Roll my, roll my, sports show, sports show. Prime time, uh, let's go. Uh, uh. To be the best, you gotta beat the best. I'm like Curry in the clutch when it comes to this. Switch, all next, go and place your bench. This ain't checkers, this is chess. What's your best move? From the base about the great alive. Look a listen, no further. This is your host, Ryan. Primetime Jones, where I dig into the mind of sports fanatics and athletes, as well as give you my mind on the sports topics you need to know. To be the best, you got to beat the best. Speaking with a raw mind, this is Raw Mind Sports. Let's go! Welcome to Raw Mind Sports. I'm here today with Sean Drone of uh, my hometown, Tarver, North Carolina, and also a football player at the University of North Carolina, and he also had a tremendous career in the NFL. Now he's retired. But first, Shandro, let's talk about where did the love of football start? Um, so my love, I think, started with uh, just watching football with my dad. Um, grew up uh, Cowboys fans. And then, you know, from there, uh, my big cousins, Ramel and Jamel, they were already playing like Little League football. Um, so when they started playing and they were already playing at, at a little age, a sm- uh, young age, you know, that, that inspired me and, you know, they were good. They were fast. So yeah. They, they definitely inspired me to, uh, want to play at that, that age. Uh, so, you know, just from that, I mean, it, that's what sparked it. Tell me about the coaches that kind of helped you get to where you was at now. Um, so I would say just starting off in little league, like my, Coaches, uh, Coach Pipkin, Coach D. Um, I had a lot of coaches, but uh, they were def- definitely integral in, you know, just boosting my confidence at, at a young age, um, showing me that I could, you know, really play. Because, um, you know, when you that young, you're just playing for the fun of it, you know what I mean? But they, they really seen something in me, so, you know, you kind of fed from that. And, um, uh, I mean, I played Little League up until seventh grade, and I've only really going to play one game in middle schools that got hurt. And then, uh, you know, in high school, it became uh, Jeff Craddock, who was, uh, you know, definitely integral in my, you know, just development as a player, as uh, my physical. Um, he, I was in, I, we joke about it all the time. I used to be in band, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm musical, but I was in band and uh, like my junior, senior year, he started, it might've been sophomore year, he started taking me out of band class <laughs> to come get me to lift weights. So, like, <laughs> while I was supposed to be in that band, I was in there lifting weights with uh, Coach Craddock. Um, so, you know, just I think, you know, with him, I was really, like, one of his first guys to go to school. So it was kind of a learning curve for both of us. Um, and, you know, he, he, he definitely helped me out, you know, with getting the word out there with, you know, um, it was VHS tape back back then, yeah. so one on DVDs. <laughs> so he, he done a good job with that, and um, you know, from from there to the league, you know, well from college, that was, that's who you know definitely played a big part in who I, who I became as a player. So let's talk about where we at now doing this show. Mm-hmm. What led you to Carolina? Um, so I grew up again. You know, my dad was a Carolina fan, and you know, it kind of became who we were as a family. So I became a Carolina fan. And, uh, you know, he used to always talk about Kevin Bryant, or Ked as he called him, uh, which, you know, back then I couldn't, I didn't see him play, but he used to always talk about him. Um, And, you know, from then we used to watch Carolina basketball, Carolina football. So that was, that was how we became, well, I became a fan. Well, let's talk about also how you didn't start off being a running back Mm -hmm. at Carolina. Right. So, how did it end up you becoming a running back at Carolina? So, um, I was when I came out. I was I came out as an athlete. Even when I was lit, listed as uh, like on the rivals and scout.com and all those sites, I came out as an athlete because um, you know I played everything in high school. So um, on the offensive side of the ball, and then when I was on defense, I would play outside linebacker. But safety, right? I probably played safety once or twice, like the whole time I was at at Tarver High. So when I came, they were like, you know, you will get a, a chance to play early. So on the defensive side of the ball, though, because it was like eight running backs when I came here. Um, 
And I was like, you know, maybe I, I'll just go to the defense side of the ball so I can play early. And that's every, you know, kid's dream, I think, coming out of high school just to play early. So I came, I came here as a safety. And uh, like the, I still remember like the running backs coach and the DBs coach were like fighting over me to see which side I would play on. But defense got one first because he said I could play. <laughs> I could play. <laughs> so, you know, I went over there and, you know, was terrible at it. <laughs> I, I was like, man, I almost like in my mind, like, man, I don't need football ain't for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, but that wasn't my natural position. And um, with that, my dad was already, dad and Kelvin Bryant was like, boy, you don't need to be playing on safety. Like, you need to go over there to the offense side. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, you know, just being a freshman and, you know, coming in, you don't really have no clout like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, my dad really was the reason I went back to running back. He was like, man, I'm telling you, you know, safety is good or whatever, but running back is your natural position, so you need to go talk to him. So I played safety um, my freshman year, and then my red shirt freshman year, I started out like in a, a preseason, and then in spring ball, at the end of spring ball, I remember vividly, um, I was sitting on a knee right here on like the 20-yard line, and I was kind of like in that moment where I didn't even want to play football, uh, to be honest with you. And, you know, Bush Davis was a coach at, at that time. So I told he, – he walked past me. I said, Coach, I, I want to talk to you. Like, it was something my, I can hear my dad just say, you need to go talk to him. <laughs> so he walked past me. I told him I need to talk to him. And then, you know, uh, I think uh, the next week I talk, went up to his office and was like, Coach, I, I know, you know, I don't want to be selfish or anything, um, but I feel like I can help the team better at running back. He was like, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, I mean, we know you're an athlete or whatever. You can do a lot of different things, he said, but, you know, you know you're know, going to be eight on the depth chart. <laughs> I was like, well, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? I'll still be over there doing something that I like, and, you know, I know it'll, you know, I, I'll work hard to get where I need to be. So long story short, you know, that that – that same uh, training camp, I started seventh or eighth on the depth chart, worked my way up to second, and then by the third game, I was starting. So you know that's that's the whole story behind that. Man, that was amazing, kind of working your way up. Yeah, through eight guys to yeah. actually be the number one running yeah. back. Yeah, and once you took over the start mm -hmm. starting position, what was the preparation like game to game? Um, it was it was kind of hard because. You know, like in Tarver High, we ran the wishbone. <laughs> yeah. You know, we fake it here left and right. So, you know, that wasn't, you know, uh, something that was the thing here. So, even like switching from defense, defense was hard. I think defense was way harder than offense to try to learn, like, all the checks and stuff. Um, but when I came over, uh, I think the hardest part was just, uh, I think, learning pickup and blitzes. And watching film, knowing, you know, the tendencies of, like, you know, if you got a shade here or a three technique, you know, who's going to come, where they're coming from, you know, from week to week, it was different. So I think that would probably be the most challenging part is running the ball. This is natural. You get the ball and run. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, it should be like a, a different cultural shop because yeah. of the fact that, you know, in Tarver, they run the T. Right. Now you're thinking about audible and spread offenses, Picking wide out. Places. Right. All yeah. that stuff, something yeah. that you might have had to, to kind of do in um, high school. Right. So after – Playing here at UNC, you had a chance to go play your dream come true in mm -hmm. the NFL. Right. So let's talk about that. And what was a life like in the NFL life? Uh man, it was uh, it was great. It was a it was a dream come true for sure. Um, definitely a lot of ups and downs and a test of faith <laughs> and even my abilities. You know, sometimes you know I, I question my ability. Um, you know, but early early on, but you know I. I had to remind myself, like, I'm here for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it, you don't just get to the NFL because you're, you know, average. Um, and I had to, you know, battle that. And then just the politics of the game and being undrafted. Um, teams never had a, a big stake in you, so they really didn't have, um, you know, any loyalty to you, per se. Uh, so, you know, just going through that part of it was kind of hard. But, you know, just being – being running out on that tunnel with your boys on Sunday, man, Monday Monday through Saturday was a watch. Like, Monday through Saturday, it was kind of like, man, I just, you know, want to get it <laughs> over with. But Sunday come, man, you like, that was all worth it. You know what I mean? Like, the preparation is so much different 
on you know that level as opposed to high school and college because uh, at, at that point it's your job you know it's your livelihood and every day like you ain't on scholarship so right. every day somebody they're working people out on monday and tuesday to come take your job mm. so you got to always be on on your game man and you know really uh knowing what to do your your margin for error was very small in the league because like you said someone someone wanted to take your job and you know the fact that you're expendable as a as a free agent um you know it was very it's, it's in the back of your mind you know regardless of whether you you know feel comfortable or not it's always in the back of your mind speaking of that i know i read something previously on you about uh your favorite team playing for was san francisco 49ers mm -hmm. personally my favorite team even though they're not doing anything this year <laughs> let's talk about um Oh, you what made you be a Cowboys that? fan? No, 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 I did yeah, not. Did. I don't know my sports. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I thought you was be a Cowboys fan, See, man. Oh, no, no. I okay. can hear the mouth now. But uh, <laughs> so um, what was it like to play for them and what really led you to saying that they're your favorite team? Um, so ultimately, you know, like I just talked about, the ups and downs of the league and, you know, just going – I mean, I had some – Great teams, great uh, teammates that I still talk to, coaches that I still talk to. Um, um, but when I got to San Francisco, that was like the the pinnacle, I guess, of my career that, you know, that I've been since fourth grade wanting to, to be. And that was a starter in the NFL. I never started a game until I got to the, um, the 49ers. And the way it happened was just like, you know, I, I got cut from the Browns. And then, you know, two weeks later, San Francisco called me. It was like, um, you know, I still I went in thinking like, okay, they just want me to play special teams and maybe third down. And then when I got there, I didn't know somebody was hurt. Like both of the starter, like Reggie Bush was there, he got hurt that that game, and then uh, Carlos Hyde was out. So I pretty much was the man. And me and uh, Pierre Thomas actually came in at the same time. So I was thinking, and they were probably thinking that Pierre was gonna start. But I was like, man, this thing wide open. So I went in there going <laughs> going to get it. And, and everybody was like, I don't, I don't see how, like, you weren't starting, you know, before then. But that's just the way it goes. But, you know, when I got to the 49ers, uh, the team opened me, uh, welcomed me with open hands, open arms. And the coaches really believed in my, my coach, Tom Rappin, who I, I spoke, spoke about. And, um, you know, just the organization. And then the organization, the ownership was – you know, all about community, all about, you know, their players. And, you know, it 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 was just home for me, you know, while I was there. So um, that's why I say it was my – and the fans were great. You know, I, they, they were definitely probably the best fans I've been around. Um, so that's what made it my favorite. Random question. What was something that Coach always used to say to you in the NFL? I don't know what – whatever team you played for. I'm pretty sure a coach had something. You always say you had some type of niche where you'd be like, this coach said, you know what he's going to say to you. To me personally? Yeah. Uh, that's a good <laughs> question, man. Um, I can't really think of nothing off the bat, but um, I, I've had a lot of coaches that um, – so, matter of fact, when I got to the 49ers, there was a, a receiver coach there. Um, his name is uh, – Adams, last name Adams, I think. But he he was coaching with Giants when I got to the Giants too. But so when I got to the, I got started not really feeling comfortable, but I was confident, you know, because I was a starter while I was in San Francisco. He was like, "That's that dog in you right there." I know Jerome had that dog in him. <laughs> so you know, like a few weeks later, he was like, "I don't see that dog. That dog ain't barking." <laughs> so he would say that. And then when I got to um. When I got to the Giants and he was there, he was like, I won't see that dog. Ladies, come to see that dog. I know you can have, <laughs> you, you got it in you. So that was one thing. I mean, it's, it's a lot of uh, good coaches that I had, man. Maurice Carthon, he was, man, he was always on me, always. But I think he, he seen, you know, something in me that I didn't see in myself and, you know, something that, because he, he even said, you know, I don't see how you weren't drafted and, you know, so I, I know coaches seen stuff in me, and you know a lot of them just had a lot of good things to say to me and about me. So, and I think that was another reason why you know if I got on with a team or got cut, I was with another team because a lot of the coaches rolled over too. So, I had that uh, relationship with a lot of coaches.
God made things happen for a reason. You know it. You know it. Let's talk about um now your career. Um, you just recently retired, mm -hmm. and what led you to retiring? And what's next for Shandrone? Um, leading to retirement, it was uh, you know, the fact that I was out for a year. Um, I hadn't played, and you know, I was still working out trying to get in. Uh, and my last uh, you know, workout with a team was with the Saints last year in December, I think it was. So. Um, a lot of lull in activity, and my agent was still definitely trying. But, you know, I had been told him, you know, I'm thinking about hanging him up a couple months ago. And I think in my mind I had already hung him up. Um, you know, I definitely was still working to stay in shape. I still stay in shape. Um, but, you know, there was something that, you know, I prayed about, you know, just straddling the fence. Like, okay, one, one week. Yeah, I'm done with it. Next week, man, I know I can still play. You know, in the yeah. back of your mind, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, just ultimately, you know, talking with my wife, talking with my parents, um, praying you know, about my decision, that's that's really what, what led to it. And then, you know, uh, I, I walked away with perfect health. Uh, not perfect health, but, you know, as far as mentally, you know, I'm still, still sharp, I'm still, you know, good. So, I, you know, I definitely wanted to walk away with that as well. So that was ultimately what led to it. And, you know, I guess now, uh, you know, I got into real estate investing in 2014. So that's one of my passions. I definitely, you know, love real estate. And, um, you know, just dabbling here and there, you know, just trying to figure my way. Um, I definitely, you know, have an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't plan on working for anybody. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just, um, you know, developing um, business-wise. And then we have our foundation, the Drone Family Foundation, um, which is, you know, it's based here. But we, you know, I, all of my stuff will happen in Tarboro. Um, so that's that's what we're doing, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Man, that's awesome. I got another question for the viewers. Uh, you know, with the likes of Kelvin Bryant, mm -hmm. Ty Gurley, mm -hmm. and yourself, mm -hmm. we have a lot of running backs that come from our town in Tarboro. Can you tell the viewers about Tarboro and what's it like water? playing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, to be named, you know, among, you know, those names, you know what I mean, especially like with Kelvin, man. Kelvin was a, definitely an integral part of my, you know, development here at Carolina. You know, he went here. Um, he was here on Saturdays and, you know, um, like Kevin would call me every Saturday. You know, he a man of very few words now. Right, so he right. Don't, he don't really say a lot. <laughs> right. But what he say is gonna mean something. You know what I mean? So like when I left, we would leave the hotel, and he, he knows we had the bell tower walk. Um, so he would call me like when we leave um, the hotel, and I'd be on the bus, and he'd call me like before every game, and be like you know, give me a little few words, and she would just hear from him. You know, on Saturdays that do something to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just to know like you going to do the exact same thing he did years ago. And then he came from Tarboro, so, you know, it made it that much more special. Um, so, you know, just being, you know, associated with him, you know, is, is definitely humbling. And, you know, Todd, Todd doing his thing, man. I mean, he's definitely, he's the best in the NFL right now. Right. You know, the best running back in the NFL, hands down. Um, and, you know, he has a bright future ahead, ahead of him. So. You know, just being the name, you know, with those guys and, you know, just being where we come from, it means a lot. You know what I mean? So that's that's that. Tell the viewers who you're trying to inspire right now and their dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. What does it take? So who I'm trying to inspire right now is anybody who will listen. Anybody, not even, you know, football players, uh, which, you know, I – I don't really have a desire to coach or, you know, I still want to be around the game in some aspect, but I think, you know, and me and my dad kind of talked about this the other day, like, you know, people, um, they, they expect you to have, you know, this big career or, you know, they expect it just to be about football. But when I posted that thing about my retirement, it showed like how much I um, inspire people on a, another level, just life and spiritually. Um, in general, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just about football. And that's, that's like, humbling and emotional for me just to, you know, show how, see how many people I inspire outside of football. And, you know, I got so many messages and comments. And I, I tried to respond to a lot of them, and a lot right. of them I couldn't. But, 
Um, it, it's just people messaging me, like inboxing me, just you know how certain a certain thing that I posted, and like um, we were talking about earlier, how I posted my whole life and career um, <laughs> on Facebook. But I wanted everybody to see, like you know, um, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And you know, that's something my dad always uh, told me, and you know, that's something I live by. And you know, it's easy, it's easier to say that, and it's one th- another thing to actually do it. You know what I mean? So um, I forgot what we were talking about, but I got off on a rant. <laughs> what, what was the question? <laughs> okay. A well mind sports moment. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I get to talking and things just just go. That's that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, Roll mind. Mm-hmm. Um, just tell people what you feel and. Oh, yeah, well, how I'm inspired. Okay, right. yeah, back to it. So um, my thing is just to continue to inspire, you know, people that, you know, the power of your mind, the power of speaking things, and the power of actually doing it. You know what I mean? That's that's the, the three superpowers everybody has. Um, you know, just speaking those things as though they were, as the Bible says. And, you know, in your mind, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. And, you know, just having confidence in yourself. Um, so th- that's what I, you know, continue to look to inspire people to do i mean if you you have any type of desire you know uh, go after it you know is that because if you fail you'll you'll learn things in between those things when you fall in that you wouldn't have if you didn't try so you know that's my thing um just just inspire people to you know go after their dreams and keep the faith in god and you know everything else and take care of itself in my conclusion road mind sports your time is coming your time is coming Sean Jones is a proven athlete. Who knows when his time is coming? He may have some good days. He may have some bad days. But at the end of the day, the good day, days prevail over the bad days. Absolutely. With that being said, Sean, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. <laughs> you guys tune in for this episode. Again, follow Raw Mind Sports on any podcast player. When this show is up, hopefully you'll see it in the evening, morning, or night. You guys have a blessed day, morning and night. All next gone, place your bet. This ain't checkers, this is chess. What's your best move? From the base about the great alive interview. With a chosen few who did what they had to do. On the road to glory, telling untold stories. If it's fourth and ten for the win, I'm going for it. Yeah, that's all mine, speaking with a raw mind. Been in the shadow for too long, now it's time to shine. Yeah, that's all mine, speaking with a raw mind. On the ladder to success, now it's time to climb. Raw mind, sports show. Raw mind, sports show. The prime time, let's go. Raw mind, sports show. I just like the sound of it.